Ada we don't know where Lani da we don't ah. Kadu si di la wata se. Nes konsan hen. Chide ti sa di sang My name is Harry Osri. I was born in uh, Tahlequah, Oklahoma back in 1949. In my stone carving, I I just don't do one central figure in my stone carving. There's something all the way around the stone, you know, because to me, it tells a story. This one I'm working on now, it has two faces, one in front and back. One is the intruder, one is the uh, Len uh, uh, Stewart. And the reason why I do that, to me, I, I it's it's just my way of expressing myself, telling uh, someone, hey, there's more to to this than what you sometimes think there is, you know. And if you look at two sides of the story, you have two different perspectives. Back when I was a kid, we were out and gathering wild onions and we came along a clay bank. And my mom says, you know, when I was a child, I, we used to make our own toys. And she said, we'd take this clay and would make, and she started making these toy animals. And I think that was kind of like a, the beginning for me, in a sense, you know. We didn't have uh, art class while we were at school. So we just, um, I just started drawing on drafting class paper. You know, we had real thick drafting class and paper. And man, it was nice to draw on. So I used, I used to draw pictures on those things, you know. My first attempt in Indian art which I didn't know any art existed. So again, that was back in the uh, high school days. And when I went to Bacon, Bacon has been really a, a, a mecca for artists for years. I had one class and it was old painting class, Dick West. I walked in the classroom and man, I looked around, I said, geez, Johnny Tiger sitting there, David Williams sitting there, Joan Hill sitting there. Talk about intimidation, man. That was it. I do try to paint what was taught me, culturally or uh, socially or uh, spiritually, you know. I look at it from the perspective of what I know and I know what I paint, you know. So to me, that's something that was kind of instilled in my, in, in a sense, by Dick West too, you know. And he was really a, a good um, resource for uh, philosophy and art, I think. And of course, Cecil Dick was, I mean, one of the mentors, so to speak, that I talked to all the time. They developed that type of work I do, I think, it came from those two. And I think uh, in that sense, art brings me back to reality of who I am and where I came from and, and the uh, humbleness that we should have as, a, as a, uh, people, you know. When I do my art, I do look at it from that perspective as a, as a um, tool for teaching, you know, the tool for uh, understanding our culture from our perspective, you know? Because anyone can do art. Anyone can do a uh, cherokee art if, if they if they want to, you know? But it's a soul and the culture, the understanding within that sometimes comes out in, in the work that a uh, cultural person has, you know? In my experience, art, language, and culture, you know, those are intertwined. You can't get away from one from the other. And I think a lot of times people forget that, you know? Even speakers forget unique uh, quantity that they have about them. You know, they, they're able to speak the language. The Mercer School had been in existence for about a year. And Dr. Sly was the, uh, the uh, coordinator of the uh, program. And she asked me one day, she said, hey, I've been uh, involved with the Mercer School for a year, but would you want to direct it? And it's something I had been thinking about for a while. So when the opportunity came up, I said, yeah, you know, I guess I could do that. Yeah. So she sent me out there to the school and it was interesting, uh, after 19 months, we had little guys arguing in Cherokee. You know, that's my toy. No, it's not, it's mine, you know, in Cherokee. And this lady came in, she's great grandmother. She said, well, I'm gonna tell you something. I said, you, you people are doing some good things here. Because they were elderly ladies, I, 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 our friends, you know. They were talking Cherokee and uh, she said, my great grandson was sitting there listening to him. He looked up and said, I do scratch like you want I too speak Cherokee. And he said, those ladies, boy, they looked down like, wow, did this kid say something in Cherokee? You know? And the, the one lady said, what's your name? And he told him his name. 
And she said, that was really neat. That's the first time I saw a real Cherokee boy. The way he, he responded to the elders and the way he carried himself. She said, I hadn't seen that type of reaction in, uh, from a baby since my kids were kid babies. Man, you talk about a gut-wrenching hit, you know. I, I, I felt that. I said, God. I had to excuse myself because I walked in the hallway, man, there's a little tear right here. I said, God, that's powerful stuff, you know. I went back in, I said, wow. I, I said, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make new turkey babies, new turkey people, you know, that's that's our goal. And to me, that was I, one of the greatest experience, you know, in, in that sense, because man, that was uh, really uh, telling that it can be done. But like anything else, you have to really put your mind and soul and heart into doing whatever you want to do, just like, uh, things we, uh, artists does, you know. It's, it doesn't just start building things right away. It, it takes years of practice, years of working together and then doing the things over and over till you become proficient in what you do, you know. So language works the same way. Uh, you have to start from the beginning and you crawl, you walk, you run, you fly. 